Hello, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be starting a new reading vlog that is going to consist of two horror books and two thriller books. And they're all recent releases that I'm very, very excited about. Some of my most anticipated books of the year. This vlog starts with footage of me going to Barnes & Noble and purchasing one of the books. So <laughs> let's cut to that. <laughs> Barnes and Noble and they had The Drowning Kind there in hardcover <laughs> and I'm so excited to read this. I love Jennifer McMahon so much and if this is anything like The Winter People then I am stoked. Oh it's actually the next day already and I didn't get a chance to update you yesterday but I got 75 pages into The Drowning Kind yesterday but I just wasn't in like a super reading mood yesterday, so I didn't read as much as I thought I would. But anyways, um, so far this book is really interesting. The book is kind of doing a similar thing to The Winter People that I really enjoyed in that book, and that is that it has like two timelines that you're following, and one of them is in the past, and like I think this one it's like 1929, and then we have a present day point of view in 2019. And something that's really interesting about this one too that I love is that it's following two sisters in the present day timeline, and what ends up happening is the sisters are kind of estranged over the last year or so like they don't really talk anymore and one of the sisters gets a bunch of missed calls from her sister and then she finds out that her sister has died and she drowned in this pool which is really like weird because her sister was like a really good swimmer and it just like doesn't make sense to her why her sister would drown and then in the past chapters in 1929 we're following this couple who is desperately trying to get pregnant and they're really struggling with not being able to get pregnant so her husband takes her to this place where apparently there's this water there that will like grant you wishes or some shit like that they're hoping that this water will like help them get pregnant and I really love how there's like a theme of like this mysterious spooky water so far because I have a feeling it's going to be connected in some way. But I'm enjoying it so far and I think I'm going to try to read a little bit more today. <laughs> afternoon now and I wanted to let you know that now I am 215 pages into this book. I've pretty much just been sitting on the couch like all afternoon reading this and I'm really really loving it. I feel like Jennifer McMahon is so good at writing characters that you give a shit about and also just writing like really genuinely creepy scenes that are just so subtle. I don't know, I feel like this book is reminding me a lot of The Winter People. It's reminding me a lot of Pet Cemetery. It's reminding me of The Haunting of Hill House. Just like a lot of things that I really like. It just has similar vibes. And I feel like this book would have been perfect for me to read when I just did my Drowning in Horror Books video because this is so like horror but like in water and like they're talking about the pool and the springs and there's like is there someone in the water like they don't know it's just oh my god this would have been perfect for that so i'm a little salty that i didn't wait to do that video with this book <laughs> yeah anyways i'm really loving it i'm gonna do some yoga and probably eat some food later take a little break but i do think i want to finish this book tonight because it's so good <laughs> I just finished The Drowning Kind and that ending? Are you kidding me? Man, you know, I was thinking this book was probably gonna be, you know, somewhere around a four star for me the whole way through, but I think that ending just bumped it up to at least a 4.5 because what the fuck? I don't know if I enjoyed this one quite as much as The Winter People. I actually found them to be a little similar to the point where it was like, these books were really similar but then there were some things that i did enjoy more about this story than the winter people like mainly the fact that 
we're following two sisters in the story. Like, I really liked the story about sisters. And I just really love the idea of, like, a horror book that deals with water. Like, the whole thing with the water was just so creepy and so atmospheric. And just the idea of you being in the water and something else being down there with you. Or, like, the unknown of, like, what is in this pool with me or what is in these springs with me. The idea of something being in the water with you and you not knowing about it. Or, like, the feeling of, like, swimming and maybe something grabbing at your ankle. Like, that is just so scary to me. And I loved the atmosphere in this book. It was just very creepy, but very subtle. And yeah, I'm just, I'm so happy that this, like, lived up to my expectations and that it was just so, so good. I love Jennifer McMahon. Like, her writing is some of my favorite horror writing. And I love that she writes horror that just feels very real. The most horrific thing is like losing loved ones and like dealing with grief and how grief just kind of can make you go crazy, you know? Like that's just the most horrifying thing to me in real life and so I just love that all of her books kind of have that vibe so far. At least the two that I've read so far. Ugh, I love this. I loved it so much. Making some dinner. Asparagus and cauliflower and then this is bread and then Rich is making steak. They're like little steak slivers. We need to put them separate because Rachel has to put more spices on hers and I have GERD so these only have salt. <laughs> Tragic. Tragic. Hello! Sorry for any background noise. We've got the dishwasher and the laundry machine going in the back. But I wanted to let you know that I've started arsenic and adobo. And this is one that I'm like really excited about because it's called like a cozy murder mystery thriller vibe kind of book. I feel like this book is gonna remind me so much of Finley Donovan is killing it. And so that is exactly what I need in my life right now. I'm about 40 pages in and I'm really enjoying it so far. And something I did wanna say about the beginning is I really appreciate the fact that in the beginning of this book, there's an author's note and she kind of talks about the different trigger warnings that are involved in this book because she thought it might be a little bit heavy for some readers who might think this is a little bit lighthearted when it's not too lighthearted. So I really appreciate that. And then also I think it's so cute because she includes a glossary and pronunciation guide for everything because this author is Filipino and there's a lot of different words revolving around family and food and just other different things that we might not understand. <laughs> and so I really appreciate that and I think that's so cool. That, but yeah, I'm about 40 pages in and basically what this book is about so far, about this young woman who moves back to her hometown because she is being tasked with saving her aunt's restaurant which is like not doing so hot when she's back at the restaurant she runs into her ex-boyfriend who is also this very harsh food critic and he's always very critical of her aunt's restaurant and so she makes him this dessert that's like special for him and she brings it out to him and he eats it and then he like literally drops dead for some reason they don't know if he had an allergic reaction but he's like diabetic and they don't know if it was too much sugar or whatever then his dad like the dad of the guy who just died is like saying that it's the restaurant's fault and that it's her fault and that she wanted to kill him and so she kind of gets involved in this like murder mystery but it's also very like cozy and family vibes i love too that this is like an own voices filipino story and i think it's really cute because Honestly, like the Filipino family values remind me so much of my family and their Mexican values. If you didn't know, my dad is half Mexican and my grandma's full Mexican. And I feel like there's a lot of crossover between like the Filipino culture and like the Mexican culture. Like just the way that they're very like very much about family and about the food. I feel like it's very common with both. Like my grandma had all of these like special recipes and she was very, very passionate about family gatherings and wanting the family to be together. And I don't know, it's just, it's reminding me a lot of my own family. So it's making me miss home quite a bit. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. And I can't wait to read some more of it. I think I'm gonna read a little bit more of it later tonight because me and Rachel right now are going to watch The Circle on Netflix because they just uploaded the next four episodes and me and Rachel are both trash for The Circle. Oh my God, love it. Oh my gosh. It's a little bit later in the night, but we literally watched all four of the new episodes of The Circle. I know that show is trash and it's kind of like totally cringy at times, but I am so obsessed with it. Like, I don't even care. I get so excited about like different plot choice and stuff. And if you're into like fun reality kind of game shows, you should check it out because it's a super fun time. But anyways, I haven't read much else. I've only read another 10 pages of this, so I don't have much to say. But also, look at what came in the mail today. The amazing, lovely Murphy. Um, she has this 
candle shop on Etsy called Reading with Murphy and her Instagram is called Novel Wicks and she asked if she could send me some of her candles and it's really cool because she does like themed candles for like different genres I'm pretty sure. The real question will be can I open this box without scissors? A sweet little card first. Wow she is so sweet with this little card and she did say that there is a discount code for my followers which is Gabby15 which I'm assuming will give you 15% off on her Etsy shop but let's take a look. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, this candle's way bigger than I was expecting it to be. Ooh, okay, this one says Thriller. It looks so cool. Let's get that ASMR. I just painted my nails. This is perfect. Holy crap, that is so cool. Look, at it's so glittery and it's black. This one says the scent is Egyptian Amber and Plot Twist. <laughs> Oh my god, that smells so good. I really, I really wish you could smell that. It's it's a great time. Oh my god, how cute is that? I've never had like a sparkly candle before. And then she sent a romance candle. I mean, thriller and romances really just, those are the fave genres, you know? And it says the scent is rose and endless tropes. How cute. Oh my god, it's pink. It's pink and sparkly. Oh, you're fucking kidding me. Dude. It smells like straight up roses, like this is amazing. Did I get glitter on my nose? Oh, oh my goodness, these are such high quality candles. Like thank you so much to Murphy for sending me these. And once again, I will leave her link down below. These candles that she makes are also super cheap on Etsy, by the way, I was just looking at our Etsy shop and I was like, I cannot believe she makes these for this cheap. Like this is such a deal and you can get 15% off when you use Gabby 15. So amazing, thank you so much, Murphy. Good morning. Um, last night when I was reading, I got just barely a little bit over a hundred pages into it. I wasn't reading up too late last night because I was pretty tired, but yeah, it's still like, I still feel exactly the same about it. Something exciting is that I'm bringing a house at the bottom of a lake to work with me because one of my coworkers is reading this for her like book club this month. And I'm just like so excited to like hear her take on this. <laughs> it's so funny because for their book club sometimes they choose some of my favorite horror books that are like weird horror books. And I'm like, they're gonna think I'm so weird when they read this book and they're like, why does Gabby love this? <laughs> but anyways, it's exciting. I can't wait to discuss that book with more people and also total random side note but if you've ever tried these silk almond milk yogurts like holy shit this is so good back when rachel was um forced to go dairy free last october when she was having all those medical problems um we tried a bunch of different like dairy free yogurts and stuff like that and they were all like really disgusting like i didn't like any of them but this one the silk brand vanilla almond milk yogurt. Oh my god, it's so good. I was shook how good this was. I just tried it the other day from Wingo because I was like, why not? And like, oh my god, I like this more than like the regular yogurt that I get. So like, I'm gonna be buying this one, I think, from now on. And I love just bringing this and then like bringing like a side of granola and fruit and just like dumping it in there. Like, oh my god, amazing. Anyways, I am heading into work all day today. I work with Rachel all day today too. And I think I'm gonna listen to this audiobook on the way into work because I just got it checked out from the library and it's called Last Call. And it's like a true crime audiobook and it says a true story of love, lust, and murder in queer New York. <laughs> busier than we were anticipating but it's fine it's 1 30 now i'm on break i'm gonna try to read some of this while i eat some food really quick i just made some mac and cheese really quick that has like some pork in it and stuff and yeah I'm, i don't have too long of a break today so i don't think i'm gonna be able to read too much but i'll do my best all right i just got home from work and rachel is making this exciting chicken dinner that we haven't tried before but while that's in the oven I thought I would take this moment to try and light this candle. I got it to light. It's beautiful. We got buns, buns squishy buns, asparagus again, and then this is, Don't touch that. Don't touch that. This is the chicken 
and rice. Oh my god, it looks so good. It's literally fire. <laughs> Hello, it's now about 11 o'clock at night and I just finished having the most amazing dinner that my sister just made like it was so freaking good It was like chicken and rice and asparagus and some bread some buns. Oh, it was amazing And then we ended up watching Hell's Kitchen It was the season finale tonight and like no spoilers or anything for who won But I'm so happy that the person who won won the show because they were the person I was rooting for for pretty much the entire show so very stoked about it. And now I'm in bed and I'm jumping back in. And I haven't been reading a ton today. I'm on page 126 right now. And I barely got the chance to read anything while I was on break. I think I only read one chapter. And then I did read a little bit tonight right when I came home. But but I don't work tomorrow. I don't really have anything going on tomorrow. So I think I'm just going to stay up. Hello. Good morning. I am very stoked. To say that I was able to stay up last night and finish reading Arsenic and Adobo. This book, I have mixed feelings about it because I feel like this book started off really strong. Like I really enjoyed the first hundred pages with like the banter with like the family and the characters and the way that the mystery began in this book I thought was really interesting and really fun. But I feel like this book just started to get a little bit like cliche and kind of repetitive and boring like a hundred after a hundred pages into it and between pages like a hundred to 250 like in there i just thought it got like really boring and just kind of like predictable and i almost fell asleep like twice while i was reading this but then i will say i did like where the ending went like i really did like the last 50 pages it definitely stepped it up and i there was one thing that happened that i didn't see coming and so i feel like this is going to be somewhere around a three to three point five stars for me i haven't quite decided where my rating will land for it yet but i think i just wanted a little bit more from that mill section of this story it just got really slow for me but again the things i did love about this book is i love the Filipino culture in this book. It just reminds me so much of like the Mexican culture in my family. I love her family. I love all of their relationships and how they put their family first. And I love the like food in this story. And I love that it takes place in a restaurant, you know, because I work in a restaurant. So like totally relatable. Strange because I love everything about this book except for the like mystery aspect of it. Like the mystery itself just didn't really work for me that much. Like I wasn't very invested, but everything else about the story I really loved. So I just kind of feel, I just kind of have mixed feelings about it. But I guess I just don't really know if I'm a fan of like cozy mysteries, you know? I can't really think of any others that I've read. I don't even know if Finlay Donovan is killing it is considered a cozy mystery or not. I don't even know if I really know what that means, but maybe it's not my thing. I don't know. I kind of like my mysteries to be a little bit more hardcore, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm going to go to Vitality Bowls and get an acai bowl. And then I think I'm going to start something else today. I just don't know what yet. <laughs> we are here. And also, oh my god, my movie theater reopened today. Ah! Oh my god, yes. Vitality is the best. I could eat this shit every day. So um, while I'm eating, I'm going to watch Community. Because I've been watching, I only, I've only seen the first four episodes so far, but um, somebody recommended this show to me after I said I love Shit's Creek so much and I need another really good, like, funny show, like, sitcom type show to watch. So I'm only five episodes in so far, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I think it's really funny. It's like a sitcom show that's about, like, a community college group of people. Oh, buddy. Hello. It's about 3 o'clock in the afternoon now, and I was debating between starting one of these next. This one's the family plot, and this one is just one look. And these are both art copies. I believe this one comes out in August and this one comes out in July. But I decided to start this one, Just One Look. And this is this author's debut suspense novel. So I wasn't really sure what to expect with this one. And I kind of just jumped in without even really reading the premise or anything. And now I'm 80 pages into this. I was like literally only planning on reading maybe like a chapter or two just to get a feel for it. And I'm kind of obsessed with it. And I just kept reading this afternoon. <laughs> I think the main reason why I'm really enjoying this so far is because it has one of my my favorite thriller tropes <laughs> and that is that we're following a main character who has like major stalker vibes 
in this book we're following this woman named Cassie who I think she just got like let go or she got fired from her previous job we don't really know all the deets but she's getting this new job at an office like a lawyer's office where she's working as a temp and her job is to basically like check through all these emails and like she can either mark them as like unresponsive or she can mark them as like they need to get flagged so that the other lawyers can read them because they have to do with the case i don't really know but anyways through these emails she gets access to see some of these other lawyers in the building like she gets to see some of their emails that accidentally come through the system and so she starts to get obsessed with this one guy named Forrest and she can see like all of his emails that he's sending to his wife Anna and like she's seeing all of his emails that he's sending to just like anyone basically and it's so interesting because we're just following her as she's like slowly starting to get obsessed with this man and this guy Forrest like works in her building he's like a really hotshot lawyer who's like really rich and like it's just so entertaining like this is like exactly my favorite kind of thriller trope like I don't know why I love following main characters who are so obsessed with somebody else like it's just so entertaining to me it kind of reminds me a lot of like you by Caroline Kepnes which is ironic because Caroline Kepnes blurbed it at the top here and i was like that is so ironic because it was reminding me of you and like joe goldberg it's also definitely reminding me of like bad mommy by taryn fisher like it has that vibe of like this woman getting obsessed with another couple <laughs> so yeah i'm just i'm really enjoying it i'm really surprised by it so far so i think i want to try and like read this whole book today because i just know this is the kind of book that i can just like devour in one sitting if i really wanted to but it is already three o'clock and today's supposed to be the last day that it's like not raining for like the next 10 days and so i feel like i kind of want to go out and like take a walk and take tank with me and especially since it's like a friday night and i'm not working today by some miracle i just want to like get out there you know tonight when i get back i have a fun not fun but like a fun dinner planned because i'm trying these turkey burgers that i got from target and i've never tried a turkey burger before so i'm very curious to see how it'll be and then who knows maybe later tonight i might do some like reading sprints or something on my youtube channel like i've never done reading sprints on my channel like ever but i definitely want to finish this book tonight like that is the goal <laughs> you get so excited ready to go to the park thank you for the park huh That was a good boy, Tiggy. Wow, he's so tired. <laughs> uh, uh, mm. Gave him some water, but he's still so tired. Oh, buddy. I'm home from taking Tang on a walk. I have washed my hair. I showered. I'm feeling super fresh, and I think I'm gonna start some dinner. I just posted an Instagram thing that said I might go live on my YouTube channel within like an hour and do some reading sprints. So that should be fun. But for now, I'm gonna make these turkey burgers that I got from Target. And I've never made these before. So hopefully they turn out good. I keep saying they, like I'm gonna have more than one, but I'm just gonna have one. <laughs> and I forgot we have avocados so I can make avocados on it too. I'm only slightly alarmed by how light this looks. I'm just used to making like normal burgers, you know, and the meat is just really dark. So this should be interesting. I'm just worried that I'm not gonna be able to tell like when it's done since I've never cooked one of these before. Woohoo, we're rocking and rolling. I also got these amazingly soft buns that I just bought yesterday and some Cheetos. You know, I originally had out the cheddar for this, but like, I was thinking of like a normal burger, but is it like Swiss better with turkey? Like anytime I make a turkey sandwich, I'd be using Swiss. Maybe I should use both. Oh my God, what am I thinking? Use both. <laughs> All right, I think it's finished cooking. So I just threw both pieces of cheese on top and put a lid over it and I'm hoping it melts it. <laughs> um, it came out pretty beautifully. And then I put some avocado. I put the lettuce on the bottom and like we are ready to go. Oh my god. I just tried to cut it in half and I almost destroyed it. Let's give it a try. It kind of smells like chicken. <laughs> it kind of smells like that chicken burger that I love at Burger King. That is not bad at all. That's actually pretty good. Like this tastes pretty close to like a normal burger for me. Love it. I don't have any napkins. 
been a couple of hours, but I was able to do the live show tonight that I wanted to do. It was actually really fun and it was almost two hours long. I will leave it linked down below if you missed it, but it just ended up being some fun reading sprints. We did two reading sprints that were 30 minutes each and then I hung out for quite a bit and did like some talking and hanging out in between and it was a really fun time and I'd like to do them more often on my channel, but I've been reading so much of this all day. I read during obviously the reading sprints and then after the reading sprints I was still reading it a little bit too and now I'm on page 240 and I only have about like 40 pages left or so and oh my god I'm loving it so much. I just love reading about like kind of like a stalker character who's like obsessed with this one person and they're just so determined to find out things about their life and it's just so creepy and so ugh. And it's just, it's scary to think about, but it's so good. And like, depending on how these last 40 pages go, like I could see this book being like a 4.5 out of 5 for me. Like I'm really enjoying it. I'm really having a good time. And like, shit, I just started it this morning and I did not expect to love it so much because I didn't think I'd be able to like literally bust this out this quickly. God, I finished it. That ending was perfect. Like it was so good. Like, can I get a sequel? I would read a book two immediately. Damn, you know, for a minute there, I was a little concerned because it started to feel like it was like going off the tracks, but then the author just like brought it right back. And this author had some tricks up her sleeve, like what the heck? There were some twists that I did not see coming and I just like really enjoyed this. Wow, amazing, like for real though, can we get a sequel? Cause the way this ended, like I could really use a sequel. I do think I'm gonna give this somewhere like around a 4.5 to 5 stars. I don't really know, but like, I just, I loved it so much. Hello, oh, it's the next morning. It's Saturday and it's about four o'clock. I'm getting ready to go into work right now actually, but have started reading the next book for this video and probably the last book for this video. And that is Near the Bone by Christina Henry. Because yesterday when I was doing the live show, I think it was Josh commented and reminded me that this book already came out. I don't know why I like totally forgot that this book is already out. And so I just got so excited about it and I immediately just downloaded the ebook onto my phone so I could start reading it. And I'm about 50 pages into it. This book is so intense. Today is just like the perfect day to read a horror book because it's very like moody and cloudy outside and it's probably, I think it's supposed to rain tonight. And so I'm so excited about it, but if you didn't know anything about this book, Near the Bone, it's like about this married couple who lives on this mountain. We're following from the point of view of the woman, Maddie, and she is dealing with her husband who's like kind of a fucking asshole, like he's super abusive like physically and emotionally and he's just like the fucking worst At the very beginning of this book she goes out and sees this fox that's like mutilated on their property and stuff and she doesn't understand what's going on they think it's like a bear on their property or something but we are starting to figure out it ain't no bear it's a lot worse than a bear this creature or animal or whatever the fuck it is is probably so fucking huge like they can't kill it with a rifle they don't know what it is and it's making some freaky ass noises so terrifying and i'm obs i love it so far i love it so much like the atmosphere is great i mean don't get me wrong it's kind of hard to read about this freaking abusive asshole like i mean like i said he's emotionally abusive which is hard to read about but he's also physically abusive which is also like ugh. The basic question surrounding the family is still abusive. Here is the same man. This happens every time. He was both possessed sexually and low end. morning so last night i was up reading near the bone and i got 51 percent of the way through the ebook oh my god this book is freaking wild and it's much more of a survival story than i was expecting it to be but like in a good way like it is just so suspenseful and so intense and i do have a theory about like what's actually going on it's just like so well written and i'm just like on the edge of my seat the entire time that i'm reading this book and i love the vibe of like 
this idea of being on this mountain and it's very isolated and there's like a monster or like a creature they don't know what the fuck it is it feels very it almost reminds me a lot of room in a way and then it also reminds me of bird box kind of like it has like a similar vibe for some reason so i'm really really enjoying it i'm having the best time i want to finish it today i will say though um i can see that this book might be very triggering because this guy that she's with like her husband william is like one of the most abusive pieces of shit that i've ever read about and even i'm finding it kind of hard to stomach because he's a lot like not only physically abusive a lot but also really really emotionally abusive and manipulative and just like fucking gaslighting her non-stop and it's just like it's really annoying and it's really hard to read about besides that like the story itself is so intriguing and everything about this like creature or monster i'm like obsessed it's so good <laughs> and so yeah i'm very excited to read more later today um right now i'm doing something that's kind of crazy well it's not kind of crazy but it's just crazy that i actually finally went through with it because last night while i was on my phone i decided to finally go through with this big purchase that i've been wanting to do for like a while now and i decided to get a new camera and a new lens and um i ordered it from best buy but unfortunately the camera isn't available in stores so i'm getting the camera itself shipped so it's not going to be here till next week but best buy just texted me and i can go and pick up the new lens which is exciting because i can use the lens on my other camera that i have um so i can like test it out today and stuff and see how it looks but i'm so excited to finally get a new camera because i've been needing one for a while because back in february i actually dropped this camera and there's like a huge crack on the screen you can't see it but i'll show i'll show you the crack when i get my new camera <laughs> but like it's so bad and um, it's just, I've had a lot of like focusing issues with this camera and like some issues with the sound quality and stuff ever since. So I've been like so annoyed because I'm like, I need to be professional and I needed to get a new camera. And I've been doing so much research for like so long. And I finally decided on one that I like and I'm just so excited for it to come in the mail. So I'm really excited. So I'm gonna go pick up the new lens now. Um, I also did wanna say I've been listening to the audiobook for Last Call still and I'm 70% of the way through it. And this is like so freaking good, but it's also so hard to stomach because it is very, very graphic in detail. And it's honestly like listening to a true crime podcast. Like it will tell you word for word how these people were killed and it's just intense but it's also so good and it's like about the last call serial killer that was like in new york and and the serial killer was specifically targeting gay people and it's just very informative i had no idea about any of this and it's such a good audiobook oh my god look at it look at it it's stunning oh my goodness i cannot wait to use this Hello there. It's the end of the night. I'm filming on my new camera lens. I don't know if you can tell. It's super wide, which is just nuts. I'm actually sitting really close to the camera and I don't even think you can tell. But anyways, I wanted to update you because we just finished watching the Oscars and not gonna lie, it was kind of like a disappointment this year. I mean, I really love the fact that Chloe actually won Best Director and she's like the first woman of color to ever win Best Director and the second woman ever to win Best Director. So I mean, that's pretty awesome. But also, maybe this is just on me because I haven't seen Nomadland yet. So <laughs> because Nomadland ended up sweeping, I was just kind of like bored throughout the whole show. The whole thing with like the best actor at the end, like what the heck? I mean, giving it to Anthony Hopkins, like, I'm sure he would, I'm sure he did great in that role. I haven't seen the movie. I don't know. But, like, to not give it to Chadwick Boseman, like, it was just not a good look. Like, why nominate him if you're not going to give him the freaking Oscar? Like, it's just so bad. And also, what was up with the Oscars this year? I felt like it was just a hot mess. Like, why did they announce Best Picture before they announced Best Actor and Actress? And also, the camera work was, like, all over the place. I felt like they were trying to go for these, like, cool artsy angles, and it was just weird. And the camera quality, I felt like, wasn't even that good. And I don't know. I just had a whole bunch of issues with the Oscars this year. It just wasn't a great time. But anyways, I did want to let you know that I actually finished reading Near the Bone by Christina Henry and like, holy fuck, this book was so good. I feel like I'm gonna give it five stars. Like, I just feel like I'm going to because it was so 
freaking good like this book had me captivated like so intrigued throughout the entire thing and this book is short enough that it's really easy to get through within like one sitting probably if you really wanted to edge of your seat suspense the entire book like literally until the last fucking sentence you're just like what is gonna happen to these people it's like honestly one of the most suspenseful books that i've read in a long time i feel like this would be the perfect book to read around winter time when it's like really cold out you know because the whole like description of this like snowy mountain is just so vivid and i just felt like i was there <laughs> And I kind of love the ambiguity of these like creatures and these monsters that are like around them. It's very like bird box to me because I feel like it kind of has like a similar vibe where it's kind of this like fear of the unknown or fear of something that you can't really see. But it's like, it's so intense because they can like hear these creatures and these monsters, you know, and they know they're close. And if you're looking for a book that's like a really intense action packed huh, story that will just like freak you out then you know i think this one's for you this one gave me so much anxiety and it also kind of made me like Ugh, with how um emotionally and physically abusive this woman's husband is in this book um it was not an easy read at all like it's definitely horror for a reason you know there's lots of like bloody violence in this book and lots of gore and the way that her husband treats her is just not great it's really awful and really hard to read about suspense wise oh my god this book was just everything it was so good and so um for that reason alone like i really fucking enjoyed it and i think i'm gonna give it five stars like the ending was fucking god tier like the ending like the last fucking sentence it gave me chills and i almost cried like i'm not gonna lie like it was stunning just stunning it was so good it was <laughs> it was so <laughs> so good yeah anyways um that just about wraps up this reading vlog but yeah thank you so much for hanging out and for watching this whole vlog and if you've read any of these books that i read during this vlog then please let me know your thoughts on them but i love the fact that i read a few different really good books in this vlog that's so exciting like i didn't dislike anything that I read in this vlog and I found a few new faves so love that for me but yeah let me know your thoughts if you've read any of these books and thanks so much for hanging out and I'll see you very soon with another one 